Hey, yeah, autism spectrum disorder. That's what the medical field calls it. I just call it autism. So what does the spectrum stand for? What makes it a spectrum? Let's talk about that. The term autism spectrum disorder comes from the DSM-5, which I've explained better in this video, so have a look if you haven't seen it yet. But I uh, will go into the definition of why autism is a spectrum, why I think it's important to recognize that it's a spectrum, but also why I think calling it a spectrum is dangerous because it confuses more people than it actually helps. So let's go into what the spectrum actually is because this is already where most of the confusion happens. The amount of times I talk to people about autism, which is often, and people say, I know, yeah, it's a spectrum. We're all, I guess we're all on that spectrum. That is not what autism spectrum means. Autism spectrum refers to the amount of help required. It comes also from the DSM. This is much more defined than people think. The three levels on that spectrum are level one requires support. Level two requires substantial support. And level three requires very substantial support. So those are the three levels that actually make up the spectrum. So the autism spectrum is not referring to how many autistic traits somebody has, but it is actually referring to how well a person can deal with their condition. So that means the spectrum refers to how much help somebody needs. This person is on level one of the spectrum and they require support. This person is of level three on the spectrum and they require very substantial support, which can help us understand how much support somebody needs. The problem I see with this is the confusion. So people think spectrum means some people are very autistic, some people are less autistic. That's not a thing. When talking about the autism spectrum now, I want you to think about being left-handed, okay? There is left-handed people who require support, there's left-handed people who require substantial support, and there's left-handed people who require, who require very substantial support. That differentiation often is determined by other factors than the fact that they're left-handed. But being left-handed in particular causes certain difficulties already. For example, using scissors for right-handed people. If you're right-handed, you probably don't even know that there's such a thing as left-handed scissors and what the purpose of them is. But people that are left-handed use them because it makes their life easier. Most people that are left-handed don't need any support at all for being left-handed. They just live being left-handed in a world that's mostly designed for right-handed people. That way of thinking is exactly the same with autism. The majority of autistic people don't need any support. They live their lives and you probably don't even know that they're autistic. But I would argue that the same thing applies for neurotypical people. There is neurotypical people that require support, that require substantial support, that require very substantial support. The problem with the diagnosis of autism is that it came out of the medical field from people that had issues. Only the cases that require support get fed into the field of medical diagnosis. I believe this is a form of survivorship bias. Let me explain what that means. Abraham Wald, who took survivorship bias into his calculations when considering how to minimize bomber losses to enemy fire during World War II. Each red dot on this picture is a bullet hole spread over multiple planes that all came back, showing where most bullets hit. When analyzing where they need to reinforce the planes for future attacks, people suggested the area with the most bullet hits. Abraham Wald disagreed. His hypothesis was, we need to reinforce all the areas that have no bullet holes, because those planes were lost in the war and never returned to us. But this is what's happening with autism today as well. The vast majority of cases, those that don't require support, never get fed into the medical field. And so all the medical diagnostic criteria and field of research end up only considering the cases that do need support, making the data look 
as if autism means you need support. I'm not saying you shouldn't give support. We should give support to anybody that needs it, regardless of whether they have a piece of paper telling you the name of a condition that somebody classified it as or not. But what we do need to make very clear is that autism inherently is not something that requires support. It's just a different way of thinking. If we can realize that it's just a different way of thinking and question our own assumptions, we will avoid those misunderstandings. And that's where I want to leave it today. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. Um, we're getting really close to 200 subscribers. So if you haven't already subscribed, hit the notification bell so you can get notifications on your phone when videos come out regularly every week. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.